Hello, my name is John, John Marvidas, and today I will show you how to do a buffer overflow attack. Uh, for our example, we'll use wound server, uh, so that's a folder. Um, let me start the server. Yeah, so after the starting the server, we have to figure out uh, which port that service is running on. So next step would be to use uh, a command net stats minus a n t sort of a n p t c p and p t c p to identify what's technically we are running. Uh, on a 9999 port. Uh, yeah, so this port we will be trying to attack from our Canada Linux machine. So, yeah, service running, one server is up and running very good. Uh, we have identified uh, what there is a buffer overflow issue with, uh, with one particular variable in one server, and I will show you the Perl clip. Perl, Perl script, sorry, Perl, Python script, <laughs> uh, how to kind of uh, check, uh, you know, how many bytes we need to send to the vulnerable server in order to crash it. So, yeah, so that, that is a script. Uh, we will kind of connect to the host on the port. Uh, I'm here doing a while statement because I need to figure out how many uh, bytes I need to send before crash is happening and a vulnerable part uh, of uh, of that uh, is a specific uh, variable which I say t run yeah and, and and that's how we are going to kind of trigger that buffer overflow Okay, so without any delays, let's start. So before we start, we need to run immunity debugger. So we start immunity debugger and we will attach wound server as a process. So there we are, uh, process attached and we are running uh, that process within immunity debugger. So then we come back to um, Kali Linux machine and then from the Kali machine, we'll run Python and we will run our fuzzer because we need to figure out exactly how many bytes we need to, to kind of trigger that hash, uh, that uh, buffer overflow. And there it is. As you can see, our uh, immunity debugger has stopped. We have filled the variables and there it is, EIP next uh, register, which we will cover, uh, next instruction, instruction pointer is kind of filled with 41, 41, 41, 41, which means in ASCII A character. Uh, so we have actually overfilled, we, we've got control of EIP uh, register. So yeah, so our step one is achieved. We send kind of uh, many A characters. To be precise, we send between 2100 and 2300 characters to trigger that buffer overflow. Uh, yeah, but that kind of uh, range, 2100 till 2300, is not really good. Uh, we need to find out, you know, where exactly lives our EIP. Where, where is that valley? Yeah. Uh, and for, for that to kind of to happen, uh, we will use um, <clears throat> a built in uh, Metasploit uh, Ruby script, which is called pattern create. Yeah, so we identified what we sent 2100 uh, bytes, it was okay, but uh, when we tried to send uh, 2300 bytes, then the program crashed. So we will use, uh, kind of, we'll create a string of characters uh, and we, we, we will specify with minus L argument, we want to create 2300 uh, characters. So let's see the output. Yeah, in a second, we are get generating those 2300 characters. After we generate it, uh, we will uh, need to uh, kind of uh, work on our script to modify slightly. 
T include those kind of characters, yeah, which we generated with uh, uh, Metasploit. Yeah, so there it is. We, we are defining the sockets and we will send uh, 23,000 random characters. So that's a script for it. Okay. Uh, so we will kind of close the debugger because we already crashed the wound server. Start all over again. Attach again, wound server. Run it. And we will submit our generated string from Metasploit. Okay, another crash had happened. And there, if you will take a look, now our EIP registry setting is totally different. So that is the key element there. So we need to remember or write down that value, 6F433. Uh, 76F. Yeah, so that is the key point uh, because we will need to find out, uh, you know, the exact value, how many exactly bits we need to send to the vulnerable server to trigger the crash. Yeah, so that EAP value is very important to us. So, as a next step, uh, we are going to do uh, to kind of find the offset, and again, we will use uh, Metasploit framework inside the tools, exploit, pattern offset Ruby script uh, with minus Q and the value given will provide us the information, how many exactly bits we need to send to trigger the crash. And there it is, we need to send T thousand and T bytes, yeah, of any character, uh, into T run uh, variable in order to trigger the crash. So once we have identified uh, the exact number, so next step would be to uh, to sort of modify our script slightly to include in a buffer which we are going to send. We'll say we will be sending uh, T thousand and T A characters. Then after that, uh, we will send four characters as a B because the next would be our EIP uh, value. So we are leaving that value as, as B. And then we will send C to fill the buffer. Yeah, and we actually subtracting the sums there. So we will send about probably, what, 200 and, and uh, 200 and Ninety uh, T, uh, no, sorry, ninety-four characters uh, as a C characters. Yeah. So, uh, okay, that script is done. We will restart bone server again. Starting immunity debugger. Run. And in the Python, we will use our third script. And if you will take a look, yeah, so now we send it uh, T thousand T characters of A, then we send four characters for a letter B, which is ASCII code 4242. And there it is, EAP register. Now we have a full control because there is 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, yeah? Uh, so we have full control and then we are sending a C character to be filled in a buffer. Yeah, so if you will look uh, uh, where our buffer uh, is, and that's stack pointer. We, let's see where that stack pointer points us to. Yeah, so we, we're sending a lot of A characters. Yeah, as you can see, 41, 41, 41. Then there is four bytes of number 42, which is our B character. 
And then uh, letter C, ASCII code 43, is kind of sent into the buffer. Yeah, so now we have the, the, the precise memory map, what is happening in your part. Okay, so once that is done, next step is we need to look uh, kind of, uh, we need to point that ESP, um, yeah, we need to actually take control uh, to, to, to that ESP, ESP value. Yeah, and, and uh, uh, we need to point from our EIP, not to 4342, yeah, which is character B, but to ESP register, which will contain our shellcode. Yeah, so uh, that's, that's what we need to find. We need to find that uh, jump ESP value. How to find? It will open running processes. Uh, and in the processes, yeah, we will not choose uh, one server processes there. Let's take a look at NTLDR DLL. Uh, and inside there, we will try to locate. We will try to locate uh, jump ESP value. Yeah, so where that value could be located into the jump ESP, yeah, and TDLL, there it is, jump ESP, and that's the value, 7751 DC9D, yeah? Okay, you need to remember or write down that value because that is important. Or what you will do, we can uh, copy the address in the memory, yeah? So we have that memory address, which says jump ESP. Okay, that's what we need to know for now. The next port is we have to modify our script further, uh, try to find out if there would be any bad characters associated. And a bad character would be kind of, as usual is double zero, uh, in a hexadecimal form and uh, zero D. So those most often are uh, counted as, as bad characters. Uh, but yeah, that, that's a script. We would actually put all the characters from uh, zero one till FF and try to identify which one uh, would kind of not be displayed. Uh, to identify that bad character. So once we identify the bad characters, we are going to do our next step to modify uh, or to look in our kind of uh, payloads. Uh, in order to generate that payloads, we use uh, we use command ms venom, yeah, so that's ms venom command, minus p for payload, saying windows shall reverse TCP. Uh, we're using lhost, yeah, so that's my IP address, that's the port number. Now, the bad characters would be 00, 0 and 0 d in the hexadecimal notation. Uh, then we will output that file. And what you want to do, you want to actually say what you want to encode it with Shikata Ganoi uh, encoding. Yeah, press enter. And we have our kind of payload. Uh, what we are doing with that payload, we will copy. So from the last quotation symbol to the first one, which specifies buffer character, yeah? And we have 351 bytes, yeah? So we are copying it, and we are going to place in our payload variable, yeah? So we are placing the whole payload code there. Uh, then kind of everything is from the previous script, the, the, the socket description. 
Now in the buffer, what we are saying, we'll send T1000 TA characters. Then remember, uh, we found jump ESP uh, address uh, in, in, in Unity Debugger. So I will use that address, but what, when you're writing that address, uh, it's stored at seven seven. You need to actually switch over those digits. So the first digit becomes the last one. The last is the first. So uh, th that's how we are writing uh, in the opposite direction. So it's nine B DC fifty one seven seven. Where reality in reality that address was seven seven fifty one DC nine D. Yeah. So but uh, when you are kind of putting in a code, you need to uh, kind of turn over that IP address. Then we will use uh, next instruction address, uh, what a code for it, for a next nope instruction, which is X90, uh, yeah, sending eight symbols. And after those symbols, we will put our payload. Yeah, so uh, yeah, then connection. And if everything goes well, we are printing message done. If there will be any errors, we should get uh, the message could not connect to one server. Okay, so that's done. Uh, and because uh, when we generated our code, what we used on the L host, we used the port 4444. Yeah, so next step really would be to, uh, to open, uh, to open that or maybe to open NC server. Yeah, so what we will do there is uh, we'll try to open a listener and see uh, Netcat listener on a local machine, port 4444. Our listener started, returning to the script. So we say Python. Restart one server, attach our module, we run. So one server is running. And now the final moment, we will execute our fifth uh, payload uh, script, Python script. Yeah, so we execute to check. Yeah, it's still running. Then we'll go there, and if you will see, that was uh, Netcat listening on 4.4, and we have established connection. We are inside a C drive on that machine, so now we can issue commands. Let's say, who am I? Yeah, I'm ZZZ user on that machine. Uh, I can check for IP config information yeah so that was uh, IP address of the Windows machine and we can confirm that from there yeah as you can see our IP addresses are exactly the same so we successfully created buffer, buffer our overflow attack and exploit, exploited uh, that vulnerability and gained access to that machine. That's what we needed to show. Thank you very much.